So what uh, naturally makes a diverse microbiome? Like I know they've done a lot of studies where they uh, have seen that, you know, farmers and people that work the land and are on farms and have animals, they tend to have more diverse microbiome. So is it exposure to the two obviously makes the most sense, but what makes a naturally, um, as opposed to like taking probiotics and taking a bunch of different types, because people will see that on a bottle, right? They'll say, oh, this has this many types of strains and this billion, um, you know, probiotics. So I'll take this one as a, so instead of that, what, how are we naturally acquiring a diverse microbiome? Yeah. Uh, there's a whole movement though. When you mentioned about like farmers having a different gut microbiome, right? people living in kind of rural communities, their microbiome is looking different. Um, there is a new, I'm going to say new, but it's, it's been around for a little while. The idea of um, societal changes or, or what you're encountering um, this idea of rewilding or the wilding of the gut. Mm -hmm. So, um, we're not at a point where we can say like, okay, so because you interact with this kind of dirt or these types of animals, your gut will be better. But we do know that as society has changed and we've started being inside more, interacting with less, um, being out in nature less, our guts have changed. And with that, we're also seeing changes in what disorders are coming up, what prevalence of different things we're seeing. So we can't say that like, because we're not in nature and not outside as much, then that means there are different disorders. But we do know that as society has changed and become more industrialized, there has been a shift in the gut microbiome. Mm -hmm. And with that, there's also been a shift in, in similar time course to what diseases there are 